2019 world champ is back in the lineup up, up against a seven time world champion in Stephanie Gilmore. He's got the most event wins here at Honolulu Bay in the Lululemon Maui Pro. And Steph Gilmore after event win number five. Carissa Moore's after her fourth event win here and she's up at the moment. And there is so much noise coming from her cheer squad up on the point here. Ronnie Blake with the man who had eight top four finishes, a world title and uh, 88, Barton Lynch. This is going to be a lot of fun. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. And uh, with Tyler right there, we've got the three best lady surfers, in our opinions, left in the event. Yeah, we're going to see a couple of close, looking real close, these two scores. Who will take on Tyler Wright in the final of the Lululemon Maui Pro for 2019? She just overcame Tatiana Weston Webb. It's a battle between two great rivals. But uh, despite the fact they've got so much head to head history, uh, 14 wins for Carissa against Stephanie's nine. This is actually their first heat here at the Bay and uh, this could be something spectacular because they're the two highest scoring surfers at this venue, Barton. And when the conditions are clean and nice and they start letting go of those big front side calves, you know you're going to see something to remember. Yeah, absolutely. And the interesting first exchange, 217, 213. So things are tight right from the start. And if, if the first semi-final competitors will watch the, the heats before they surf and, and try and identify opportunities, see what the ocean's doing, get a feel for what's going to happen in, in their upcoming semi-final in this case. And so if you're watching the first one, you would you would recognize that the consistency in the swell is starting to back off a little bit the swells meant to back you know lose its its power and its strength and size through the day and um, i think we saw the sort of first signs of that really in that first semi-final and then in this one we saw both ladies you know attempting to get that early start and get something on the board early so um you know the use of, of priority and your wave selection is going to be all important because when you match these two ladies up you know i would say at this wave uh, Honolulu Bay, I go advantage Carissa, having grown up in Hawaii, having the, you know, that, that familiarity with, with deeper water waves. And, um, you know, I think that the momentum of that world title win just half an hour ago or whatever it was, just not so long ago, um, that'll still be lingering and, and have a, 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 you know, a full halo of positivity around her. Definitely, and you're, you're spot on. Even Stephanie Gilmore said these days, Carissa is the person to beat out here. Uh, we saw a beautiful moment, Strider, with the two competitors meeting uh, after Steph uh, eliminated Caroline Marks, Carissa's last title rival just moments ago. They had a big hug, and then Steph said, so you'll give me that next uh, semi-final heat, won't you? And things got awkward pretty quickly. <laughs> well, I'm sure they would, because it, deep down inside, uh, they're both uh, vicious competitors, and that's what we love about them. Uh, they're beautiful. They're great to watch, but you do not want to get in the ring with them because they're going to go right for the throat, and that's the best part about it. And we'll, right now, you, I think Barton hit the nail on the head. There's just not a lot of waves coming in, and the best waves that I've seen, really, I've moved all the way to the inside here. They're not really out where they're sitting, and they're kind of shifted over a bit, and on the inside, they actually hug the reef. And then every once in a while, there'd be that big set. So we'll see right here what Carissa can do with this wave. Looks like a beautiful one. Take it away, Ronnie. Well, drives up into that first section. Nice drawn-out carve. Trying to gather some speed now for hopefully a run through the Keiki Bowl on the inside. Another big rail turn there. This one's starting to fade away. She's going to get out of it. Gamble, though, isn't it? On a, a fading swirl, there can still be those bomb sets. You move to the inside and chip away on smaller rides. You might get yourself a couple of sixes, but your rival might paddle into the wave of the day. And with best two rides, you know, you, you, you're obliged to wait. As we see the replay. Nice whip out of the top. Pumping and driving down the line, making sure she gets in front of this one. Gets one, one extra nice wrap here. Beautiful carving turn. Love the technique she employs in those turns. Steph Gilmore now, 27 and a half minutes to go. Both competitors with very small opening rides, but they're starting to ramp things up a little bit now. Steph, pin drops out of that one. It'll be better than her first wave, but we'll see in a moment what the judges thought of it. She drives off the bottom. Nice clean carve there, back to the white water. It'll be in that 
tight pocket of the wave. Beautiful snap there as well. And then the pin drop to, as she sees that wall just go to close out on her. And this is that front angle of it. Here's the cutback while she waits for the wave to stand up on this inside. Here it stands up. She gets that beautiful snap out of the top. Both these ladies have just got such great styles, great technique. The interesting thing about these two multiple world champions is they're never really clicking at the same time, the same year. One will be on fire and the other one's having an off year and they almost avoid that rivalry somewhat. They're always engaged in battles with other competitors. For Steph Gilmore, it was Lakey last year. For Carissa this year, it was Lakey, Caroline Marks. But they're never really in each other's way. But it's funny, just when it feels like Carissa's tracking down Steph's world titles, Steph will creep away and have a great year, win more events, get another world title. and Because it really has the makings of one of the greatest rivalries, woman on woman, it pitted together and, and, and challenging for a world title that we have ever seen. And it is, it's quite, that's peculiar, isn't it? I think it has something to do with the fact that these two have such lofty expectations of themselves that when they see one another doing really well, the pressure is instantly building from the outset. And there's a, a meltdown that happens and they can't get themselves back on track. So the, the title race then, you know, we start looking at the form surfers who, who aren't struggling for that confidence and they instantly become the new challengers. And I suppose for people of such uh, reputation, such, the, the credibility that they bring is so strong and so powerful for their serving, for their results, but they both are quite vulnerable at times as competitors. Stephanie as well, we've seen her have those hot and cold years. We've seen her have those years where she'll just fall on waves when all she had to do was stay on her feet and win. Brain melter. But uh, 25 minutes to go, waiting for the next waves to roll in. 5.67 for Carissa Moore, 3.83 for Gilmore on that last exchange. And the world champ is in front. But with a lull in the action, we've got an opportunity here to dive into a Harley Davidson historical moment. Carissa Moore didn't get the world title last season, Barton, but she did get the event win here and she rode a wave to perfection. The last wave of the year was a 10. It was the only 10 we saw last season. And it was the springboard that she carried through to this year. And you could see how good the waves were and how great she is. Beautiful, tight snaps. You could not get any tighter than the pocket. Great variety. The crowd goes wild. The 10-point ride to finish the year. Solid stuff and really just gave her that winning feeling. Yep. Once again, something she'd been searching for throughout the 2018 season. She carried that momentum into the new year. Took her a while to click to get a victory uh, again. But once she found it over there at Jeffrey's Bay, she got that beautiful smile back on her face. And when she's happy around a contest, look out. It was interesting because I suppose through most of the interviews we've heard from Carissa, she's always downplaying and how much it means to her and how much she cares. But being in the locker room there and, and, and as that semi-final, I mean, the other quarter-final was taking place, you could tell that there, there were the tears and the emotion and it really gave you an insight into how much it does mean. Because if you talk to Carissa, she will downplay how important it is a little bit to herself, you know, to take that pressure off, I suppose. But it was obvious that it means an enormous amount. Between the tears for the, the world title and, and the tears for the qualification uh, for the Olympics. I mean, that's some rain we could use back home in Australia at the moment. Things have been pretty dry over there. But it, it was definitely a, a good insight into just how much it means to her. And uh, it was a, a very special moment. 23 minutes remaining here. And uh, Carissa Moore holding on to a lead. But this has been a, a very close battle. As you can see, things have quietened down in this lineup a, a little. But during that first semi-final, it was busy. For one surfer in particular, Rosie Tyler Wright, she got lots of waves and surfed them very well. Lots of waves, lots of catching up to do. Tyler Wright, I mean, so phenomenal to have you back. You said that this event was part of the recovery. Did you see yourself making it all the way to the final? No, I, I think I didn't see too much, actually. It's, it was kind of nice um, to focus on the, the, the things that I needed to focus on. So, yeah, like recovery is what I'm here for. Um, healing, like it's been such a intense time in my life, I guess. So um, to come back to this is a f familiar space, you know. It's nice to see familiar faces and to be able to socialise and see friends. 
And, um, yeah, to end up in the final is a bit of a surprise, but I, I guess it's just there's not a lot of, um, I guess, being weight put on any result here. So it's more about the experience and the processing and recovery and healing and all those kind of healthy things. Barton brought it up the first day of the event. We can't help but bring comparisons between yourself and Owen, the comeback when he won at Snapper. Are you feeling some of that energy? Uh, I don't know. Um, what O did was incredible. You know, it was, yeah, amazing. Um, I think, yeah, I, I actually don't know. It makes me kind of speechless when you bring that up. Um, but, yeah, I guess for me, I just do my thing and... and and catch waves hopefully and that's like I'm pretty excited you know it's nice to surf Honolulu with only one other person out I think that's a pretty pretty good gift in itself and lastly the motivation I mean we all love surfing so much but what's spurring you on um look it's yeah it's been a rough year and a half and I think coming back it's I'm really enjoying my time here and you know Risk just won a fourth world title and that's incredible like, it's so amazing. And the kid did so well. Like, she put up a fight. She did incredible, and so did Lakey. So I got to watch from the sidelines all year, and, and that was... I've never experienced that before. So I actually really enjoyed it. I became a big fan of the sport and quite detailed, and um, I loved it, actually, to be honest. Um, so to be in the water, it's, it's kind of strange. It, it, it has a different... Everything has a really different feeling to it for me, and I think that's kind of fair with the last year and a half, and yeah, even 10 years on tour, and I've been doing it a long time now, and yeah, it just feels a bit different. Let's soak in the moment. We'll see you in the final. Well done, Tyler. Thank Back you. to you guys. Thank you, Rosie, and uh, great to hear from Tyler there. Hold it. Meanwhile, out there in the lineup, Carissa Moore and Stephanie Gilmore with a bit more of a meaningful exchange, applying some pressure to their equipment. Driving into some critical sections, Barton, I think we're going to see some solid numbers drop for both competitors. Yeah, Carissa, I think, got the advantage, got the, the better of the exchange, perhaps. be interesting to see uh, because I was, you know, I was paying attention to Tyler and what she was saying, and then out of the other eye watching the surfing. And great exchange, best exchange of the heat so far as we see Carissa's drives a quick snap just to bide the time till things get critical. And here they get critical, and she gets that layback snap under the lip. Driving powerfully, you can see her breathing out in the turns. Big snap, and you can see the energy. And, and that was nearly one of those ones where you, you're so close to trying too hard. And you can see how, how important that was to her in that turn. Great ride. Here's Steph. Drives off the bottom. Oh, beautiful turn. Great first turn. How's his second one? Oh, it's a lovely second turn, too. That she gets stuck behind for that little period of time. Very close exchange. Yeah, I think there's going to be some uh, real reward for the commitment to these first two sections. I, th I think Steph's turns on the outside section were stronger. She just didn't flow into a third manoeuvre. No, I agree with you. This angle, and, and when I saw them, I felt like uh, Carissa's wave was bigger and a better wave. But now when you're watching them here, I don't think that that's the case. Very even sort of waves, very even styles of surfing. But as you said, maybe a little more commitment and a, and, and a little more aggression in those first two turns. And, and they were on a steeper, wallier part of the wave from Steph. So could see the advantage go for go to Steph there. Just over 18 minutes to go, Strider watching on from the lineup. At what a level, Strider. So you're getting a real good look at, at the surfers on that steepest part of the wave. Yeah, definitely. I think uh, I'm glad that uh, Barton flip-flopped back to the other side of that and brought it back to Steph. Uh, I felt like Steph definitely had a steeper heavier section and really aggressively pushed into the wall uh, uh, twice and at the end of her turns she was accentuating them and it, I feel like that was the, the better of the exchange and we're going to see more exchanges though because I don't think either surfer are done here and there's beautiful walls coming in at the moment it is uh it has slowed down a lot but it's definitely really fun to see the waves when they come because the platform is so clean so because of those lulls you've got really nice clean smooth surface is when they do catch them. Well, the ocean definitely playing its part in building the drama here. It was a slow start to this second semi-final. Who will be taking on Tyler Wright here at the Lululemon Maui Pro? We'll find out in just over 17 minutes to go. But Stephanie Gilmore getting the edge on 
the four-time world champion with that last exchange. 8.17 for Gilmore, 6.57 for Carissa Moore. And on the replays, Barton, you picked up on it. Carissa's second manoeuvre, the wave kind of flattened out on her just a little bit. She was heading there with the full intent of, yeah. of destroying that section. Unfortunately, that wave just laid back a little bit on her. But Steph, she got something to really bank into. And the first turn was for Carissa was a kind of check turn, just waiting for it to stand up. Great surfing from Carissa, but the wave delivered for Steph and gave that big, clean, open canvas. And she got to do those two absolutely beautiful turns, critical, tight to the pocket, but with that style and class we expect. And the judges loved it, an 8-1-7. Pure domination from Mars. Stephanie Gilmore in this contest when it was at first, when she first came on the championship tour. That was actually a, another excellent ride. She had 13 when she came to the event this season. But Carissa Moore's had an incredible 27 excellent scores. That's eight points plus. It's just a, a remarkable record that she, uh, she has at this venue. And interesting to see the joy that Steph got out of that one section and just being able to stand there and enjoy it for that moment in the midst of a semi-final <laughs> in, in, in an event. Uh, that's one of those things that we see Steph do where she's able to, to interpret moments. We saw it on that 10-point ride at Karamas and you'll see it on this replay here. She's driving and pumping and look at that sensitivity of the board under feet. So responsive. The minute the ankles and the feet move, so does board. Here's that moment where she just stands there and gets to enjoy it, gets into that position, styles it and uh, just the simple things in life. That just feels so good. There's the smile on the face and the joy of, of just pure joy of surfing in the middle of a semi-final. Well, 15 and a half minutes remaining here. Carissa Moore holding on to a narrow lead. Stephanie Gilmore after a 4.07 here in semi-final two of the Lululemon Maui Pro. Carissa Moore is a three-time world champion, one of the most dominant surfers we've ever seen. I feel like I'm building momentum. And Carissa pops the finch free again, throws it into there reverse. There is that part of me that wants to take down anybody who stands in my way. She's going to be fired up to really snatch a fourth world title in 2019. Carissa Moore hooks it hard. Bigger set wave, drops into it, sets her line, sneaks in for a perfect little tube section. Carissa Moore looking for her first win of the season. The Hawaiian jams it, super powerful off the top. Layback hack to finish for Carissa Moore. Her first win of 2019. Your new world number one, Carissa Moore, the champion. It is Carissa's to lose. Holding the rail on the backhand, Carissa Moore. I'm so excited for this last event. It's so close. There's so much on the line. Women's World Surf League champion, Carissa Moore. Carissa Moore taking so much away from the 2019 season, a fourth world title qualification for the 2020 Olympics in Tokyo, representing Hawaii there. What a huge moment for the islands. And uh, of course, also nabbing herself another Jeep. Yeah, and, and victories in some of the best waves in the world. Jeffries Bay, Honolulu Bay. Please, what a dream. This incredible world title trophy that we've got perched next to us here on the set too. Yep. We'll be handing that over a little later on today. Just over 12 minutes remaining. And have a look at the points differential between these two competitors. 0.24. Stephanie Gilmore not far behind. Just needs a 4.07 to make the jump up into the lead. She's got the highest scoring ride. Can she back it up? She's got priority at the moment. Stephanie Gilmore, seven-time world champ, super inspired. Who would you rather uh, be? Carissa Moore, her first loss as world champion. <laughs> Who would you rather be right now? Would you rather be Steph with the 817 and still a wave to find it in second place? Or would you rather have the lead and have the 657 um, and the, that 567 to replace? I need a new car. I want to be Carissa. <laughs> we all want to yeah. be. For sure. No, it is. Um, it's a really interesting place where the is. final is at. Steph with the priority though, so advantage there. Time, 
on Steph's side as well. If Steph drops a big number here, it's going to be very difficult for exactly. Carissa Moore to, to fight her way back. So I think with 11 minutes on the clock, you kind of thinking with priority, you want to be Steph Gilmore. Yeah. You can afford to be patient because you got the eight. You don't want to get another six necessarily. You're going to wait for a quality wave. And sometimes we see this replay driving off the bottom and a nice wrap there from Carissa Moore. He just gets out of that one. Yeah, that one. That hand of the priority. Here it is. And this is Steph Gilmore trying to get rid of that 3.83. Needs a 4.07 to get into the lead. Nice fade to set up this bowl. Hooks it through the top. Hoping this wave stands up and offers a big section here. Beautiful layback jam. I love them too. Over the bowl. That was high quality surfing and really saved that ride with something special on the inside. Yeah, the wave itself wasn't so great. And, and, and as a, it, it kind of makes it, you feel like she was more going to improve on the 407 than waiting for another eight. Just get into the lead as we see this replay. Beautiful carve back into the white water, which means she's coming from behind it in this bottom turn. It means the turn is right where it needs to be. And this is the money turn. Double arm back. There it is. Both arms go back on the wave. Carves the rail. Not one of the biggest waves, but one of the best turns we've seen in the event. Well put. And here's the thing. If you've got priority and you're already chasing a 4.07 and you don't want your opponent to get a bigger lead on you, you don't give this wave to Carissa Moore. And, and you just you deal with what's in front of you in that immediate, and, and that is getting into the lead. Here's the turn, Ronnie. Drives off the bottom, puts both the arms back behind her in the water and just sits back on the wave face, drives those legs. Beautiful turn. Got to appreciate that. The judges are going to love it. Early indications are that the, the semi-final is going her way well and truly, and she's going to bank a second big score. And that wave really was a six. And she surfed it into a 7.77 by the sheer talent that she possesses. That was awesome to see in slow motion. Awesome. And sometimes, sometimes people, they look better in normal speed. And you slow them down and you start to see things that you don't necessarily like. But with both these ladies, when you slow them down, you just see how great they really are. I know exactly what you're saying. You slow some people down. You'll see water kind of spilling off the rail in the wrong direction. There'll be body parts touching uh, the wave, but those two keep their rails so squeaky clean. Oh, and the, the style and the, the, the dance that they perform is just so... It's elegant, it's aggressive, it's kind of got all of those elements that you need to be a world champion. And, well, we're looking at two of the best ever. Only world champions left in the mix here on yes. finals day, chasing the uh, event win. Between them, it is a, uh, a full swag. Obviously, 11 world titles now between Stephanie Gilmore and Carissa Moore. Steph with seven, Carissa with four. Tyler Wright's got a couple as well. But we've got to also pay respect to the, the veterans that fell off the championship tour this year. Three incredible surfers. Paige Harrab, New Zealand's first surfer to qualify for the CT. Eight years uh, at the elite level. Three top ten finishes. And uh, she is a, a competitor who will, will likely get back on the qualifying series, you'd think. Coco Ho, an 11-year veteran. We all love her surfing button. Yeah, absolutely. And, and then Silvana Lima as well. So those, those three ladies who have been on tour for a very long time and, and brought us so much joy to watch and perform over the years. Um, so I suppose in yesterday's Olympic presentations, we sort of didn't get the chance to talk to those ladies. But uh, all our respect and goes to them for their, their careers and hopefully we see them back in the jersey. Well, they have uh, options. <laughs> they can decide what they want to do. They're all capable of getting back on. Silvana Lima and Coco Ho in particular, I think they're, they're very strong uh, when they go back for that qualifying series. Yeah, Silvana absolutely. at 35 years of age surfs like a grom. Absolutely. So we and wish I feel them all Coco, the best. Yeah, and I feel like Coco Ho has, has got so much opportunity in front of her just as a surfer. Here we go. Stephanie Gilmore up, trying to improve on a 7.77. Really feeling it here. Has a lot of speed. We'll see how she uses it on this section. Really lays the hammer into that one. But it's only the individual turn. Carissa Moore behind her. She's going to opt for priority on the outside. She can still turn it with a single ride, a 9.37. No one's had more scores like that than Carissa at this venue. Yeah, while it's possible, um, 
you wouldn't want to be banking on that, would you? With six minutes, you'd still be calling that two rides, and you'd still be looking for two, two of those rides that you know two eights, and you've got it. <laughs> and she's really capable of that. Giving credit to the surfers that fell off tour as we wait for numbers to come through. Also, we have to celebrate the amazing performance of Nikki Van Dyke, who came into this event in 11th position uh, and had to overcome Brisa Hennessy to crack the top 10 and keep a place on tour because she didn't back herself on the QS this year. So she did very well to make it back on tour for 2020. And under a lot of pressure without the QS safety blanket, here goes Steph, drives off the bottom into the lip, snaps it. The spray goes flying. It's a one-turn wave. It's not going to affect anything, but it was beautiful. Here's this replay, Ronnie. You're going to love this. Just right at the lip. Perfect timing. Great control. And then just holding yourself up that little bit so that you can free fall down and you don't catch the nose. She's on. She, she's warming towards something special here, Stephanie Gilmore. She hasn't been at her best on her run through the contest. I think Martin Potter was picking up on that. He said, hey, she's surfing great, but not the Steph that, that usually goes on to a big finish here. Yeah, but you definitely get the feeling out of both of these semi-finals that Tyler was definitely heading in that direction. And at this point in time, Steph is heading in that direction too. Carissa, the energy just feels a little bit flat at this point in time. And I suppose after all the emotion and everything that you've gone through, um, you've got every right to feel, feel like that. But there's still time and it's still within one wave, as you said. So, you know, the great champion representing Hawaii, surfing in, in her, her home waves, her home ocean. You know, she's, she's not going to give up without a fight. She's got priority, chasing a 9.37. Let's get a vibe update from out there in the lineup with Strider. Oh, well, thanks, guys. Yeah, it's, uh, the vibe is definitely alive with Stephanie. She's kicking out of waves, and, and uh, earlier in the heat, she kicked out of waves and said, oops, when she caught that one that she kind of ran across and didn't do anything with, with priority. So she had made a mistake, identified it, and then thought, okay, wait, what am I doing? And she was uh, pretty vocal about it, get back out there, don't make any more mistakes, and uh, ripped the top off of it. And she's got that full force. She's back in the driver's seat, feeling really good, catching waves. Um, obviously underneath priority, just having fun and the biggest smile on her face out here. So looking free and happy. How could she not be? It's been such a, a big, long run at it. Obviously, uh, probably a pretty stressful time between Portugal and this final contest. So, so many nights to, to go to bed at night and, and it's just have that world title race in the back of your mind. Must be a big relief button when you win that world title and the, the race is finally over. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's an emotional situation and it, it's interesting. Sometimes it, it, there's almost like a, the purpose that you live with once it's achieved kind of dissolves that little bit. And all of a sudden right, it's kind of like it can be emotionally, a, a, somewhat, a, not a void, but a strange little place to sit for a little while, you know. And, and perhaps that's what we're feeling now with Carissa in this seat. She's had those couple of scores, so sort of averaging around the six-point range, but that's not what we expect from her. Perhaps with more opportunities and more waves in this heat, she would have had a chance to kind of grow that, that and foster that energy and uh, sort of not sit and ponder so much. Physic, uh, physically, what kind of toll does just having those uh, adrenaline rushes in the earlier stages, early early rounds of a day like today, and also just the also the the emotion going through? What kind of toll does that take on your body? It certainly it, it certainly takes a toll, and you change. You you I suppose as a competitor, you're trying not to change. You're trying to do your very best to stay the same as you were when everything was going right. You want to try and maintain that consistent position to compete from. But so much has happened today and so much emotion has been released and let go. And now Mother Nature's sort of given you the chance to just sit there and think about it when really you'd rather be surfing waves and not thinking about it and concentrating on what you're doing. But if you're ever going to lose a semi-final um, at Honolulu Bay to Stephanie Gilmore, one you most probably wouldn't mind losing is right now when you've won a world title. Well, we've seen uh, the situation reversed where Stephanie Gilmore's claimed the world title and Carissa has gone on to win the event here and, and sort of yeah. bookended a, a year with a, a big finish to, to regain that winning feeling heading into a, a new season. That's what Steph's after here at the moment. Tyler Wright's chasing that same thing. Carissa just wants to make this day completely perfect. Yeah, it's... Uh... One minute and 25 seconds on the clock. So it's a one wave situation now. We know that for a fact. 
and it's got to be one that's an absolute bomb. A mid-ranger, you know, if, if you're Carissa now, it's very obvious what you've got to do. There's no confusion whatsoever in her head. It's a bomb, but it's, it's weather in 1 minute 20. You can see some lines out there behind the break and in the ocean, so there might be something coming, but it's got to be one of those ways that allows you to score a 10-point ride. One minute to go here. No matter what happens, we're going to have an epic final at the yeah. Lululemon Maui Pro because Tyler Wright's statement at the end of this year wow. could be a very big one. Yet. Okay, you've got your world titles, seconds. but here's what might have happened if I was on the tour this year. Yes, and we've seen the platform that this was. Hold on, Wade's approaching Ronnie too. 35 seconds. Well, this is going to get a chance, and it's a big set, Wade. Good size set. Maybe the biggest set we've seen in this semi-final clash. Carissa Moore needs a 9.37. This will be her last shot at it. 25 seconds remaining as she drives into that first section. Fades back into it to set up another critical turn and lays it all on the line. In limbo there through that second manoeuvre. And recovered nicely. This wave's going to give her a little bit more on the inside. Ripping into these cars with everything she's got. She needs a 9.37 out of that ride. Oh, it was a great ride, but she doesn't get that, I don't think. it's uh, That's too big an ask at this point in time. If, if there was time to get another one, that was exactly the sort of ride she needed to get one of, you know, matching Steph's. And, and with time to get another one, but I think I think this one's decided and Stephanie Gilmore is going to go through to the final. But we'll let the judges tell us. We'll see. Well, let's have another look at it. One of the bigger waves that we've seen, that's for sure. And she gave everything to this second turn, Ronnie. Watch this. Just lays it back. It's very critical. Great turn. Layback snap. Wave goes a little flat here, but she does get an inside little bonus section rewarded for the patience. Comes through to the inside, another beautiful painted at Carissa Moore wrapping snap. Waiting on the numbers to drop now. Regardless of the result, she was always going to climb up on the back of that ski with a big smile on her face. Yep. But we, uh, we still don't know the outcome of this heat just yet. Is that the it's going to be a happiest, bit small. Is that the happiest you have ever seen her losing a heat? Maybe, potentially. Maybe, potentially, maybe, and why not? Maybe easy. Sheer joy on the face there of Carissa Moore, regardless of this result. I think that it's going to be a big number. Will it go to 9.37, though? Stephanie Gilmore had an 8.17. That was turns. A, That was two turns. And, and uh, Carissa flowed right through to the inside, got a little more down the line. And one of Carissa's matched... Steph's had two big ones outside. One of Carissa's matched Steph's. The big layback snap matched what Steph had done there. Did all the other work match it, but it's a, it's a long distance from an 817 to the 95 that a, you would need generally. A little less control in Carissa's turn to yep. lay back, yep. but more risk. And sometimes that drama is something that brings points with it. And, and the longer the judges take, the more you realise this is close because they're taking their time to think about it. Let's watch the numbers come through. 8.3, so falling a, a point short on that occasion. One judge went to a nine. She needs wow. a lot more than that from the remaining judges on the panel here at the moment. The four-time world champion, Steph nine, Gilmore, three, waiting seven. on anxiously, wondering if she's done enough to go up against Tyler Wright in the final here of the Lululemon Maui Pro, the last event on the championship tour schedule for the women. Strider's out there with Steph Gilmore. What's the vibe, Strider? Oh, you know? She just gave me the sideline look and caught a good wave. <laughs> she loves it. The wave she just got was perfect. The waves are firing out here. There's no way she's not taking off on a perfect one. And she said she's staying out uh, and waiting for the final. Well, that could uh, well be the case. The number's coming through, and it's not enough for Carissa Moore. There's the score on screen. It was an 8.5, so even though she had the highest single ride of the heat button, she just didn't have that backup earlier on. And what a shame, the backup. It wasn't much that she needed, so she did her well, you know, respect for that performance because she fought her way back and, and, and gave Steph a little, little fright. Well, two of the best out here at Honolulu Bay doing battle there, but we have a great showdown about to unfold in the final. Tyler Wright taking on the seven-time world champion, Stephanie Gilmore, Joe Tappel and Martin Potter coming in for the call. Do you like that? Well, if so, 
subscribe over there, and then watch more videos over there. And then tell us your favorite videos down there. It's a three-step process. Do them all now.